Alright, 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 alright. We're gonna do another get ready for chapter one video, and we're gonna make this part two because I feel like there's a little bit more that we can do to get ready for this first chapter. So we're gonna look at some old friends. Uh, before that, let me move my face over there, and let's get rid of you, and let's get started. Oh my gosh, my, literally my two favorite things on the planet. Money and cats. <laughs> if, um, I was to take all of these things and combine them and separate them. It would be crazy for me to be like, well, I have, I don't know, one, two, three, four, like $24 cats. You can't have dollar cats. I wish they existed, but you can't have them. I have a certain amount of dollars and a certain amount of cats. So anytime I deal with money in this uh, chapter, in this pretty much the entire year, I'm always just going to keep it a regular number. So what I have is I have $1, I have $2, I have $3, 4 Five dollars, six dollars. So I have six dollars. Okay. Right next to it, I have one, two, three, four cats. So I'm gonna write out four C for four cats. I have more money, and as uh, Biggie Smalls once said, more money, more problems. But the only problems here that I'm gonna have are math problems. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six cats. Boy, oh boy. Sounds like an awesome party. Now I have six dollars. I have four cats. I have two dollars. I have six cats and I want to combine them appropriately. Well, I can't combine the dollars and the cats, like I said before. What I can do is I could take that six dollars right there and I can take the fact that I'm adding two more dollars right there and I can combine those to make eight dollars. And what I can also do is I can take that four cats right there and those six cats right over there and I can combine them all to make 10 cats. That's supposed to say 10, but there's a little bit of a lag it seems on my computer. So let's try it again, 10 cats. So after combining everything, I have $8 and 10 cats. Leave it like that, that's it, you're done. $10, 10 cats, I'm sorry, $8 and 10 cats. So it looks to me, that when we combine like terms, if it's just a regular number and another regular number, you add or subtract or do whatever you're supposed to do. If you have a number attached to a letter, these numbers, by the way, attached to letters are called coefficients. If you have a number attached to a letter and you're adding a number attached to the same exact letter, add or subtract or do whatever you're supposed to do with those two numbers and then just kind of carry along the letter along for the ride. Don't make it 2C or C squared. Uh, when you're combining like terms, you're literally just saying, I have four C's and I have six C's. That gives me 10 C's, 10 cats. So let's do a few examples. I have four pickles and I'm going to add two more pickles. That's going to be six pickles. Mm. Make sense? I have 12... Uh, why can't I think of a word that starts with R? Rats. I have 12 rats. And I have $5. And I have three more rats. And I'm going to take away $5. All right. Well, your 12 rats and your three rats combine to make 15 rats. Not 15 rats squared. 15 rats. You have $5. Someone takes away $5. You're gone. You're out of money. That's a shame. So the only thing I have is 15 rats. That's awful. I don't like rats. Cats, not rats. Cats, not rats. It's uh, going to be the beginning of my next rap song. Because rats. People who tell on other people. We don't like them. So now it's going to get a little weird with negatives and stuff. I have a negative 2x, which means I'm taking away 2x's, whatever that means. I have a 6x floating around over here. So I have 6x's. I'm taking away 2x's. Those guys combine to make 4x's. Okay. 
That plus 11 is just kind of floating around. But that's it. That's all I have. I have four X's and I have plus 11. If you have a negative and you're adding a positive, you subtract. Okay. Similarly over here, if I were to turn this into an example using money, I owe someone $12. I owe someone three X's, but I get eight X's. So now in the end, I can take the X's and combine them and say, oh, well, that's five X's because if I owe three X's, but I get eight of them, I lose those three X's. I now have five X and negative 12 just kind of comes along for the ride. Okay, combining like terms. You combine the two numbers in front of a letter, keep the letter. All right, distributed property. Look at all these kids. Look at all of them. They're different t-shirts and they're a part of a club. I want to give each of those kids three mints. So let's see, let's, let's, I know it's 2020 uh, when I've recorded this and I, I really don't want to judge genders, but I think you're a girl and I think you're a girl. And I actually, let's make girl, ah, it's already blue. You're a girl, you're a girl, and you're a girl. That gives me five girls, or as Gru would say, girls. <laughs> Gru. Oh, boy, oh, boy. There's a bruh, and there's a bruh, and there's another bruh. So I have three bras. So I have a group of five girls and three boys. You see what I'm doing? I want to give each of those kids three mints. How many mints will each little group have? Okay. Well, this is what I do. This is called distributed property. If you're taking a number and you're multiplying that number to a parentheses and inside the parentheses, you're adding or subtracting, you take that number and multiply it to each number inside the parentheses and bring down the letters and whatever symbols that you bring down. So three times five is 15. So in the end, the girls will have, that's supposed to be a G, the girls will have 15 mints. Three times three is nine. And since that's a positive three, it's going to be a positive or a plus nine. B comes along for the ride. So I take the three and I multiply it to five and that gave me 15. I take the three and I multiply it to three. That gave me nine. G came along for the ride. B came along for the ride, which makes sense. If I have five girls in a group and I say, here's three for you, 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 that's three groups of five, which ends up being 15 mints for the girls. If there's three boys and I say, here's three, here's three, here's three, 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 and three make nine, the boys get nine mints in the end. So let's actually turn this into real math problems and do the distributed property. I have three being multiplied to a parentheses and inside the parentheses, I'm adding four plus three R. So you take the three, you multiply it to four. Three times four is 12. Plus sign comes along for the ride. Take the three and multiply it to that three. And three times three is nine. And uh, R comes along for the ride. That's like if you were to say, and I have a bag, and in e I actually have three bags. And in each bag, I have four dollars and I have three rats. Again, the dollars and the rats. And I take each of those three bags and I dump those three bags out. If I dump the same exact type of bag, three of those bags, and out of each bag comes $4 and three rats, I'm going to have $4, three rats, $4, three rats, $4, three rats. And if I move all of my groups of three, $4, I'm going to have $12. And if I move my three rats in one group, I'm going to have nine rats. That's why this makes sense. Okay. So dollars and cents. So I have six being multiplied to a parentheses and inside the parentheses, I have one minus five M. Ooh, a minus. I wonder if that changes anything. Six times one is six. Drop down the minus sign. Six times five is 30. And drop the M. Hmm. I guess it didn't change anything. So I can use rats and dollars again if I wanted to, but I'm not. Three times six 
is 18. R comes along for the ride. 3 times positive 8 is 24. Now I'm multiplying a negative to a parentheses. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. See, this negative 5x, I'm sorry, negative 5v is negative 5v. So what I'm going to do is negative 2 times negative 5v becomes positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 5 is 10, and v is v. That's it. That's it. Want to do another one? Let's. Negative 4 times positive 3x, negative 12x. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. If you're like, but that's a minus sign. Minus signs and negatives are the same exact thing. Minus signs and negatives are the same exact thing. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 times positive 11b is negative 6 times 11 is negative 66, and b comes along for the ride. Okay? Distributed property. What if I wanted to combine distributed property and combining like terms and just kind of practice everything? Well, let's do that. Let's, let's do a rundown of everything and uh, add two more wacky problems at the end of it. I owe someone 16 nickels. I owe someone else negative 14, or I owe someone else 14 nickels, which means I'm down 16 nickels and 14 nickels. Negative 16 combined with negative 14 is going to be negative 30. If you are taking two negatives and combining them, you're going to have a much bigger negative, and it's nickels in this case. A dollar fifty. Negative four times 3x is negative 12x. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So we're going to take these two concepts right here that we just did, and we're going to combine them, pun intended, with these two concepts. So I have negative... So this follows like PEMDAS. If you see distributed property, do distributed property first. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Okay? Negative 3 times negative 3x. Negative negative is a positive. So that becomes 9 and x comes along for the ride. And what's just hanging out next to it? Plus 2x. So I have negative $3 floating around all by itself. Bring them down. I have 9x hanging out next to 2x's, which means I have 11x. Okay? So I did distributed property first, then I combine like terms. Do distributed property first, then I combine like terms. Oh look, distributed property. There's a negative being multiplied to an entire parenthesis. Now that negative is not just a negative. It's a negative invisible one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the negative 3p because nothing happens with them. Negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8. And negative 1 times positive 4p is negative 4p. Negative 3p, negative 4p is going to be negative 7p. Plus 8 is just hanging out. And that, boys and girls, is distributed property and combining like terms. So if you watched this and you're like, oh boy, I understand it, I feel really good, then you're going to head into chapter one feeling much, much, much better. So if you didn't understand it, what you could also do is you could just search uh, distributed property or uh, combine like terms in any YouTube uh, search and find stuff. I have a ton of videos online too. Uh, you can watch those videos. Give me that sweet, sweet, sweet YouTube money. And by the way, I have never received any sweet, sweet, sweet YouTube money, so I need to help me. Uh, but that's it. If you watch this video and the last video, you should feel really good about Chapter 1. Bye! <laughs>